In our last lecture, we discussed how ASP.NET works and also we understood the power of the web application factory to run the application in memory, at least theoretically. But now in this lecture, we will see how we can make use of web application factory to run an application in memory, which is nothing but our GraphQL API application. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to our application and the source code over here, and I'm going to create a new project this time. So I'm going to call this as an REST Sharp integration test project. So it's going to be REST Sharp uh, integration test. And I'm going to create that as an X unit project and I'm going to create it over here. So this is going to create an X unit project for me. And now I'm going to start writing the code over here. So in order to do that, before I start writing the code in the REST Sharp itself, I am going to first of all install a couple of libraries. The one of the library that I'm going to be installing is going to be the one which is going to enable the in-memory execution itself. And that library is nothing but an ASP Net Core MVC testing application. So if I just going to search for ASP Net Core dot MVC uh, testing, which is I just saw somewhere here and somehow it just went away. Uh, maybe I can just type it MVC dot testing. You see that this is the library which I'm talking about. So currently there is a preview version of version nine, which I don't want to install. So I'm going to go with the version eight and then I'm going to install this particular library over here. So this is the library which I really require to perform the in-memory execution. And once I have that, I can now start writing the code from here. So as you know, in order to run our application in memory, we need to pass in the starting point of the application. And the starting point of the application is nothing but the program.cs file as we already saw in our last lecture. So I'm going to make use of that concept over here to write the code. So I'm going to make the things much, much simpler this time. All I'm going to do is I'm going to create an variable called as application and I'm going to invoke a web application factory. And this is the same web application factory class which I was showing you in the slide in our last lecture. So I'm going to add that over here and the entry point or anything but the T entry point is going to be the program file. But before I do that, I first of all need to add a reference to the GraphQL project. If I don't do that, then you can't access this program.cs files class name over here. So I'm going to go add a reference. This is going to be exactly the same in Visual Studio as well. You can add the project reference. That's what I'm doing over here. I'm going to add the GraphQL product app over here. So this way I'm going to add a reference to this project to my REST Sharp integration test project. So now I can start using this program.cs file over here. I have did that and you can see that particular reference being added over here in the net eight and there is a projects folder and there is a GraphQL product app. So that's going to be the way you can see the reference being added. And now I can just go ahead and type what is called as program. So you can see that once I do it, it is not going to tell me exactly from where the program is going to come from because it doesn't really know that. So what I can do is hit control dot like this. And you can see that now there is a two program coming. One is the program from the test host. Another one is the GraphQL product app dot program. So I'm going to use this particular program this time. And once I do that, the program is going to be added over here. So I can now use this program to perform the operation, which is quite cool. So what we have did essentially over here is we have now started running this program or the GraphQL product app in the web application factory context so that it is going to run in the in memory over here. But now in order to invoke the client, I need to use the what is called as an client is equal to application dot create default clients that is going to create the default client for me over here. And once I have this, I then need to perform the operation. That's all. It's very straightforward. All I have to do it is I'm going to now use the application's API or by calling the API of the application by calling their controllers. And as you know that the application has got different APIs and we have been looking at quite a long time right now. So if you just go to the program product controller, you can see that we have controllers like controller slash action slash ID. Uh, similarly, we have for the get product by ID name, get product by name, 
and similarly get products all these different controllers we have so we can make use of that i mean we can just say var oops var response and you can see that i can just type client and hit dot and now i can perform a get operation a post operation or a send operation put or patch operation so all these are coming because this particular client that you are seeing over here is basically a default client of an http client itself so i can straight away use that over here so i can just use the get async method and then i can pass in the controller and the good thing about this writer ide or visual studio ide is that you can see all the requests going to come up for you automatically if you just put the product and you see that once i hit control space it's going to show me all the different controllers from the product controller so it's just going to bring all the controllers for me straight away see that this product controller.cs is going to be shown over here and this ide knows that we are in the context of this particular execution and that's the reason why it's bringing up which is cool and now i can just say get product by id and the id i just have to pass in probably like one so i just want to see the first product by its id and then i need to see the response coming up or not so i can either say response dot result as like that and you see that there is this result is being shown as a scrolly line there because you know that get async method is basically an asynchronous code so we need to write an asynchronous coding here not like a sequential code that we have been writing uh, we were writing the async code before as well so i'm just going to use the async of task over here for the method and then i need to use a keyword called as await and once i use the await keyword here now this particular method can be used as is so there is result is not required anymore i can just use response dot ensure success status score and it just works fine and now i can also see what is the result coming up from there so basically in order to print the console output in x unit you need to use what is called as an i test output helper because you cannot use the console dot write line to do that so the way i can do it is i'm going to create a constructor uh, something like this and i need to add an i test uh, output helper something like this and i'm going to add the test output helper and i'm going to create a field and now i can use this field test output helper to perform the operation of right line uh, something like this and you see that it automatically comes up because there is this uh, small ai thing sitting on my IDE. All you have to do it is you need to say test output helper dot write line, pretty much like console dot write line, and say await response dot content because this response had has got a content property and you can read the string from the string async method. So it just automatically comes up. Pretty cool. Now the application is not even running. You see that the application is completely down. So only if I run the application you should see the application is going to come up. So if I just visit this website over here, you see that the website just comes up for me automatically and I can perform the rest of the operation. But this site, the local host of 5001 is currently going to be down. I'm just going to close this completely. And this site is not available right now because it's not running at all. But if I run the test this time, you will see that the test is just going to run and it's going to spit out the response for you automatically. So if I see over here and look at that, I'm going to get an unauthorized exception. At least something is happening, which means it is trying to perform some operation and it is trying to get an unauthorized exception, which means it is trying to reach the server for me over here. So that is working already. So it is a good sign already because we could see that we could able to reach the application to get part by id and we know that our application has got the authorization in place and it won't let you in automatically without you passing in the authentication that we have been doing all these days in here like all the authentication mechanisms we have to do that so that it could able to perform the operation but at least we could able to do this by calling the in-memory execution over here. In our next lecture, we will see how we can make use of the authentication and then perform the get operation in a very, very proper way.